one for today's video we are going to be taking a look at a game that was played in the fourth round of the madrid chess festival in the great year of 2024. now the famous streamer and youtuber levy rosman has been playing in this tournament he's made a bit of a return back to chess he's off to a red hot start with two and a half points out of three and today in the fourth round he's playing against akira nakata representing the united states of america now the black pieces for his third time in fourth four games levy is trying to be solid keep drawing some games hopefully get a win here or there but he is on pace to potentially make a grandmaster norm which would be one of the three required three required results in order to get the title so without further ado let's jump right into the action so the game starts with a move d4 levy plays d5 we get knight f3 knight f6 c4 e6 and now we have the move knight c3 and here levy plays this move h6 now it's very very clear to me that having looked at levy's game that bro thinks he's a card now earlier in the tournament levy i believe in round number two against pepe cuenca he played the classic Janowski's opening with d5 e6 and a6 one of the sidelines of the queen's gamp decline which i actually played in the german bundesliga uh earlier this year i believe it was in february or march of 2024 but now we see this move h6 now those of you guys who have been following my channel and my recap you'll probably remember that he Nakamura himself actually played the same setup with h6 against none other than samuel seven in the american cup in 2023 an event which he would go on to win so the the logic behind h6 is that you stop white from playing bishop g5 here you also can develop in the castle or king out of the way and, and in the long term h6 also creates a nice escape hatch for the king what we call in deutsch the luf or as we like to call it here in american english you want to avoid the classic ice skater by having the escape square for the king so after h6 the game continues with bishop f4 then we have bishop to d6 bishops come off we get e3 castles takes takes bishop d3 b6 castles and bishop b7 now i don't actually remember this is the exact same position that i had against seven in the american cup but at any rate it is very similar so we get rook to c1 and here levy plays the move c5 now what levy is trying to do is push the pawns on the queen side develop his pieces very quickly but most importantly not end up with a weakness now if black were to play a move like c6 here for example if white could get something like e4 takes 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 you'll notice this bishop on b7 is very very passive and white has a very nice wooden shield on the e4 square so levy plays c5 and i really do like this approach from levy because he's playing something that's much more free flowing the moves are very straightforward you want to play for easy development and keep the game going and you also want to avoid having to use too much time to avoid time pressure so now we get d takes c5 b takes c5 and we have the move queen b3 and here levy plays queen e7 now what we have in this position is what we call the classic hanging pawns formation your pawns on d5 and c5 are simply hanging they're a little bit loose i'm going to avoid making any euphemisms but you'll notice that these pawns can either be very strong if you can push d4 or c4 or they can also become big weaknesses if white can target these pawns very very quickly so after queen to e7 we got the move queen to a3 now we have knight b to d7 played by levy knight to a4 and now the move rook a c8 now at this point in the game all all the pieces are really focusing on the c5 pawn white has the queen the knight and the rook that are targeting it black is guarding it with the queen the knight and his rook as well now if black is able to get a move like d4 for example exploding the diagonal for the dark for the light square b black can actually end up doing very can be doing very very well so we get rook to c2 here nakata trying to go for the double stack and line everything up towards this pawn on c5 here levy plays the move rook f8 a very very good move by the way because in this position if you try to go for the aforementioned d4 idea white can just take with a knight since the pawn cannot recapture the knight as you would lose your queen on the e7 square so levy goes rook f8 very very good move as now black is intending to play d4 here because if white plays let's say h3 d4 if white takes with a horse you take back and his uh-oh spaghetti time everything is simply guarded and black ends up with an extra horse at the end of all the trades so we get rook fc1 played here by nakata levy plays knight to e4 now i don't know if d4 is a move here i suspect it probably is just bad because white can actually yeah white can take here because now after takes 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 now white has two rooks on the lane and white wins the bishop on c8 so rook fc1 very logical move preventing d4 and now levy goes knight to e4 trying to overprotect the pawn on c5 again with these knights here nakata plays bishop to b5 and now we have this move bishop c6 another good move from levy all of the pieces are aimed at the c5 pawn so this game literally comes down to this one pawn and whether levy can defend the pawn or whether he's going to lose this pawn and whether the game so we get bishop c6 trying to keep this knight on the board to guard the pawn 
we get the move bishop takes bishop rook takes and now the move knight c3 and here levy plays the move knight df6 now the great thing about these moves is that they are not impossibly difficult moves to find and in general the position is pretty simple to play this probably will remind you of a certain former world chess champion there was a player by the name of jose raul capablanket he was a very very strong player from cuba and he was someone who actually liked much simpler positions with less pieces on the board and less ideas in general and he was a great calculator in end games probably one of the predecessors to the current world chess or to the former world chess champion magnus carlson who played in that same kind of simpler style so after knight df6 we get knight takes knight knight takes knight and again less pieces are on the board but still all the pieces are focused on this pawn on c5 here but with limited pieces on the board generally one of the maxims in chess is that if you have one weakness in a position but there are less and less pieces on the board you'll probably be able to defend the weakness and save the game so we get queen to d3 levy plays rook to d8 we have knight d2 again nakata trying to get rid of this knight which guards the pawn on c5 but now levy plays move c4 now c4 is another very very good move from levy i really like this decision from him he could obviously trade the knights and turtle to some degree with something like rook takes d2 and d4 trying to simplify the position and end up maybe marginally worse here but probably drawing in a position like this with the queen and the rook on the e file instead he goes c4 we get queen d4 and now levy plays this move knight c5 which is another excellent move as black has the connect two but he wants to create the bastion with the knight on d3 and you'll notice that in this position actually the pawn on c5 which is a weakness is now a serious strength on c4 as it supports knight the rook supports the pawn and white's knight actually doesn't have great squares and the rooks are also staring at a pawn chain which white cannot break very easily so Nakata plays b3 trying to open up the c file and now levy goes knight d3 we get rook to d1 and now let's move knight to b4 Nakata goes rook c1 and levy grabs his pawn on a2 now it's starting to get kind of dangerous here for white because black is now up a pawn with the extra pawns in the center of the board and the pawn on a7 and maybe the potential to push the c pawn up the board we get rook to a1 takes takes knight c3 and now the move rook to e1 now the one unfortunate thing for levy here is the game has kind of shifted levy is in no danger of losing here but at the same time he's up a pawn but it's very hard to prove an advantage because you have the isolated pawn which is blockaded on d5 but you also have this isolated a pawn which is under pressure on the a7 square so it's a very difficult situation in some ways because you know you're up a pawn and you're better but also you have to you have to play moves that are not obvious and your opponent simply focuses on these two weaknesses on a7 and d5 five so we get a6 queen d3 played by nakata levy goes knight b5 knight d4 played here another good move here because even though white is down a pawn in this resulting position if black trades on d4 and we get queen takes d4 no chance for black to win one sample line would be queen e6 rook a5 let's just say rook d6 and rook a1 and you'll notice that white's queen and his two rooks are far more active here than black's queen and his rooks and for that reason white is in no danger of ever losing frankly i almost feel like in a blitz game i might actually play this for a win with the white pieces so levy goes rook c4 a good move here hoping that nakata will trade the knight so he can start pushing p on the b file here with the rook and the queen supporting the pawn push but alas nakata goes knight e2 levy plays the move rook to d6 we get knight to f4 and now we have this move queen e4 another good move from levy trying to trade the queens and eliminate this weakness from d5 because if this pawn gets to e4 suddenly it's a big strength whereas currently it's this weakness on d5 so nakata plays rook to a5 here intending to stack the towers on the a file we got queen takes queen knight takes and now we have this move d4 nakata plays knight e5 rook c2 and now pawn takes pawn knight takes and nakata plays this move h3 now there have been a lot of simplifications now in the situation where black simply has the one extra pawn on the a file but the great news is here that for for levy no risk of losing they're at move 40 plenty of time to think and he has some chances to win the game so we get rook to e6 Nakata plays rook e3 we get rook c1 king h2 and now the move rook c8 and here Nakata plays this move rook d3 now I would caution you guys against like thinking too negatively about this position from the black side you've probably seen the bar is very very minimal here um and, and it's very difficult to win I honestly want to say that at this point I feel like very few people in the world could win this position with the black pieces even though the computer gives an advantage in fact I'm not even sure I would I would win this myself so here Levy plays the move knight c6 after knight c6 we get rook c3 and now levy plays knight e7 we get the trade and this move knight to d7 and unfortunately at this point levy has a passive knight on c8 and he's probably going to lose his pawn on a6 and if he loses the pawn you'll notice that nothing else really matters both sides have the mini bathtub formation on the king side and the game will probably end in a draw so we get we get rook to e7 
knight to b8 rook b7 we get knight takes a6 here we have rook a7 and now Nakata plays this move rook c5 and the players agree to a draw because if Levy moves the knight away just knight d6 knight before even material pawns on the same side nothing you can do if you take the knight in this end game as well it's rook and three pawns versus rook and three pawns three pawns I was about to say three pawns and once again the game will be a draw so in this fourth round of the tournament levy levy plays a pretty good game he draws pretty easily with the black pieces very very limited risk i would say um in general from from, from my viewpoint i mean the game came down to one week because i really do like levy's approach i mean i haven't actually paid a lot of attention to his games in one d4 to be fair i'm very familiar with his e4 repertoire much more than his d4 repertoire but having looked at his games with black so far having played this h6 variation h6 variation the queen's game decline having played the janowski as well in an earlier round it feels like he's trying to play really in the style of simpler chess and i really do like the positions that he's getting out of the openings in general especially in d4 also it's showing a lot of variety trying to mix it up and be creative which is something that i think levy has been very lacking in in general he tends to turtle and play his setups over and over again but when you look at that or you look at the openings that he's been playing um with white like the ready for example as opposed to the English or some of these Vienna openings I really do like what he's doing I also would say that the, that this tournament and Levy's approach it really highlights one of the big differences in modern day chess which is that you can look at some openings and as long as you have a very fundamental grounding and you've looked at like, like a course on chess board things of this nature you can play almost any opening at this level and it's really good to see Levy doing this experimenting playing around being creative and taking his opponent's um or so, sort of catching his opponents off guard I should say because if Levy wants to be successful that's going to be very important because otherwise these people are going to be studying the openings that he currently has played a lot online over the board in the past and they're going to be ready for whatever surprises or whatever openings uh he plays but with these surprises the fact that he's mixing it up I really do like what's going on so far and Levy continues his great results result as he now has three points out of four now in order to get a norm levy is going to have to score three and a half points out of his next five games he will need six and a half points out of nine to get the norm very very difficult still for him to get that but at the at, but the bottom line as I like to say is when you start thinking about the main thing which is gaining rating points gaining more confidence and playing well the rest will come later if you continue to play at that level so it's very very good for levy that he's playing well he has confidence and he's he's doing um he's doing great he's doing wonders so on that note I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap from the fourth round of the Madrid chess festival being held in Spain um if you are not already subscribed to the channel make sure that you smash that subscribe button below and we will be back soon with another great recap from the Madrid chess festival see you guys have a good one bye